Sunlow were a 3D printing company that deal with FDM and now resin printers. I've been quite spoilt with the whole 3D printing thing because when it comes to 3D printers I've been sent an awful lot over the last few years and I've always used just the proprietary resins that are sent with them printers. And I get a lot of questions asking about affordable resins. Now I've never played, I always just tell people I'm using this, but when I've actually had a look at the cost of the resins that I'm using, they're not cheap and some of them start at around 40 up to 70 pounds a bottle. This is something a bit different and this is why I'm doing this video for Sunlu. It's a standard resin, but they seem to think it should do everything I want it to do and better. So why not do a video for them? The first thing that I was really shocked about with this resin is how thin it is. It's hard to portray on camera, but it's like the consistency of milk. It's very, very thin. Now, the pros to this is when you leave that to drip off the build plate, it almost all comes off and there's surprisingly very little on the models to start with, apart from in the eye sockets and things like that. But the resin just runs off, especially when it's at a good temperature, 20 degrees and above. It's so thin. It's not something I've witnessed before. Now the resin parameters and settings that I've used, I'm not going to discuss them so much in the video because it all depends on what print you're using. I found the settings for this resin and my Frozen 8K Mini on Lychee. And there wasn't far off right, apart from the base exposure. This was 20 seconds and look at how hard I'm having to get this off. I bet I could lower this to nearly 10 seconds and it should be okay. You shouldn't have to struggle this much to get your models off your base. But it means that it cures rather rapidly, which is good. Now, the first problem I got to this is I washed my models in meths. Now, meths wasn't as effective with this resin. It still cleaned it and it still cleaned it in the end, but it took a lot more washing than I'm used to. Might be something to do with the chemical makeup of this resin, but meths was a little bit more stubborn than using ISO. But after getting them out, because there wasn't that much resin on there, they did come out relatively clean. However, there was a little bit of resin still on the model. But rather than dipping them in again, what I thought I'd do is I'd dip them in some red hot water to remove the supports, which helps with the final clean as well. Now with the support removal in the boiling hot water, they didn't come away as easy as I'm used to. There's a hell of a lot more flex and elasticity to this product. Um, is that a bad thing? No, because it means your models are less likely to fall off the supports. It's just that when you are removing them from supports, it does take a little bit more effort. But they still came off without leaving too many scarring issues or anything like that. The one thing that I will say is what it was making me wonder is when it was warm like this, it was almost like rubber. So I'm hoping that these models will take a good fall or a good tumble and be robust. When it comes to sharpness on minis and models, I'm not overly fussed. As you can see, they do look okay. They look a bit softer than what I'd normally use out of my 8K resins and things. But I'm putting this down to the transparency of the resin because on the very fine edges it is quite transparent is this milky grey resin. So I'll put some primer on them so we can actually see them a little bit better. Now with a bit of primer on this was just a cheap car primer and as you can tell the white in that has actually sunk into the recesses. <laughs> the sharpness of the models does look a lot better. Is this the sharpest resin that I've actually used? No, but these are just some parameter that I've pulled off Lychee for my printer. But to say these models are relatively small, they're only 32 millimeter discs that they're stood on. So you can tell that these models are actually a lot smaller than you used to. The detail and the sharpness from these models is really good to the point where you can see the goblin's eye and teeth. At that scale, I'm very happy with that. So for gameplay, what we're all interested in is how flexible and how strong is this resin. And this is where this resin's absolutely shined for me. I couldn't break the bow. It actually broke at the glue joint where I glue the bow onto the arm. So 
that's as strong as any plastic or resin model I've ever used. I tried to physically break an arm off and I just hurt my finger in the process. This stuff's really strong and I know bending and things like that is a little bit different so I thought I'd do a couple of drop tests. Drop tests are a better test because if you drop them they might land on a, a small fragile piece first or they're taking a lot of shock in one small space of the model all at once and a drop tests from various heights will give a better indication. So to start the drop test I lowered the desk to around 70 centimeters. In fact I can show you exactly 74.9 <laughs> and when I dropped them off the table Sorry for this recording, I'm trying to keep it live so I can prove that I'm not cutting and editing for the sake of YouTube. I'm just showing you what happened. And from a single drop off the table, there's no damage. Which, that's good. So I hired the table, up to about a metre. The reason I chose a meter is these are sort of heights that you might drop your models when you're packing them into a box or something like that at the end of your game day. And from a meter, again, absolutely fine. And I'm dropping exactly the same models that I dropped in the first test, hoping that the first drop will have weakened them a little bit. And as you can see, they're still fine. And I dropped a fresh model with them just in case them two did break. And all three are absolutely fine. Now, that's probably about as vigorous as you're going to get from a table drop, so I thought I'd take it a step further and literally throw them onto a concrete floor. I don't think anybody's actually going to do this to the models, but I just would really want to see how durable this resin was. And lobbing all the models as hard as I could at the floor hardly did anything, which I'm very shocked at. One of the models lost the bow again on the, on the glue line, which is pretty acceptable because that is going to be the weakest part. And I couldn't see any chips, their ears were still intact, any sort of fine little details, they all survived. The only one that did take any damage was the one where the bow broke off. And the top of the bow took a tiny, tiny little chip off the top, whereas it, at its finest. And that's me literally lobbing it at the floor. So if you're in the market for some affordable resin that gives you okay results, but your models are gonna stand the test of time and be dropped, this resin could be for you. All the links to the resin are below. And thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you again for the next video.